Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the start of my orchid adventure. I will be making the Deer and Doe orchid dress, this version. I do very much like the shirt version, but I'm gonna dive straight in with the dress version first. Although, if you are unsure of the fit, or you want to do a wearable muslin, the shirt version is probably quite a good place to start. It does have like a proper button up, no side zip in it, but it will give you an idea of how the bodice fits you if you don't want to waste all of the skirt fabric, even if you're doing wearable muslin. If you're doing a full muslin, again, I would suggest just making the bodice because the measurement on the skirt hips is pretty forgiving. Uh, the finished garment measurement for the size that I'm doing is 69 and 5 eighths and my hips are 43 inches and the smallest one is 65 inches around the hips so you probably wouldn't need to do a muslin for the full skirt if you wanted to make the top up in calico or muslin for example. Anyway that was a very long-winded introduction wasn't it? I'm making this, I'm really excited about this, this is part of my make nine, it will be the fifth of my make nine projects. I am going to be doing the full dress version of as I've said. I'm going to be using some, what is wearable muslin fodder? I have a lot of this fabric. I bought it from the textile center quite a while ago. It is a viscose and it's got this really pretty print on it. It was one of those ones that they had in the sale. I think it was three pounds a meter. I bought what they had left. So I think I have six meters here. So it's going to actually be my wearable muslin fodder for the orchid and the forget-me-not, but you'll be seeing with that forget-me-not dress in another video. So I have had a look at the back of the envelope. It has the measurements and finished garment measurements all in one place. So you can make a really easy decision as to whether this pattern will fit you before you even bought it, which I love, 10 out of 10, would recommend. The sizing on this dress seems to come up quite large. My bust measures 38 inches, which I'm going to say is this size 42, which is 37 and 3 quarters, so that size is slightly smaller than mine. But the finished garment measure measurement for that is 41 and 3 quarters, so that's 38, 39, 40, that's 4 inches of ease around the bust. Now I appreciate, you know, there's a lot of gathering in there, but as we know, I prefer a closer fit on my clothes and that is a personal preference. So knowing that, I'm going to go for the size 40, which is a size below what they recommend. It's for a 36 and a quarter inch bust and the finished garment measurement on that is 40 and one eighth of an inch. So that's gonna give me two inches of ease around the bust, which I think with all of those gathers is gonna look really nice on me. It also means that I won't need to do any grading between sizes, which is really nice because because my waist is 28 inches. The size 40 waist is 28 and a half. So slightly bigger than my waist, but that's fine. That's not a problem because the finished garment measurement is 29 and seven eighths of an inch, which will give me an inch and seven eighths. So nearly two inches of wearing ease around the waist. I could go down to the size 38, which has got a finished garment measurement of 28 and three eighths of an inch, but that three eighths of an inch might be just a smidge too tight, especially as there are buttons down the front. You wanna bear that in mind. The other thing that doing the straight size 40 with a slightly bigger waist will allow me to do is I can nip it in at the side seams if I do think it's come up slightly too big. Whereas if I make the smaller size, I have no wiggle room. So I'm gonna go for a straight size 40. The hips on the size 40 are 38 and a half inches. Mine are 43. I should be doing a size 46 according to the pattern. I don't wanna mess around with grading out from the size 41 waist to a 46 at the hip, especially when the finished garment measurement for the hip is 69 and 5 eighths of an inch, so more than enough wearing ease around my hips. So straight size 40 makes tracing out really, really easy. I don't have to worry about kind of like getting jagged lines or pointy bits or you know anything like that smoothing lines out so yeah straight size 40 for me the pattern recommends batiste cotton royal swiss dot and eyelet i'm using a viscose so it's probably a slightly slightly drapier fabric than they recommend because the batiste and cotton royal are very lightweight fabrics but they do have a certain amount of structure to them with all the gathers in this I think that the viscose is going to look lovely. I think it's going to look really, really pretty. So now that I've got my size picked, I need to work out how many pattern pieces there are. And having a look at the instructions, it looks like there are six pattern pieces in total, which is nice. So I have written myself out 
my little cheat sheet which I always do so I'm tracing the size 40 and then all of the pattern pieces once they're traced I will cross them off so that I don't forget to trace anything done that before ask me how I know this little cheat sheet is really really handy and I've written it in my friction pen so I can once I'm done with this I can actually pass an iron over it all of the marks will go and I can use the sheet of paper again so I'm not even wasting paper which I love so first thing I'm going to do is get my pattern tissue or paper from Deer and Doe ironed flat. This is not as creased as some of the like big four tissues that you get but there's still creases in it as you can see and the flatter that this is the more accurate of a trace that you will get. So I'm going to iron this flat and get to tracing. One eternity later. Okay as with most Deer and Doe patterns I knew I was going to have to lengthen the bodice. I'm not 100% sure what height they draft for, I think it's 5 foot 5, but I'm 5 foot 8. The way that I work out how much length I need to add to a bodice is using the back pieces, especially when the back neck hits at the back base of the neck. If it was a low back it would be slightly different. So I have drawn in the seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch, and I've drawn it in here and here. And then I've measured between those two marks and that's 13 and 1 8 of an inch. And then I have got the back waistband and again drawn in the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance at the top and the bottom. Measured between those two marks and that's 1 and 3 quarters. So I've added those together which has given me a final measurement of 14 and 7 8 of an inch. And I know I need my bodices to be 17 inches long because that's how long my torso is. So 17 minus the actual size of these two pieces means that I need to lengthen this by 2 and 1 8 of an inch. Really really nicely Deer and Doe have included a length and a shorten line and they've also put it where I would put it on the upper bodice rather than in the midriff piece. Loads of patterns seem to put it in the midriff piece but I think it kind of throws the proportion out especially if I am having to lengthen it by two inches like I am with this one that would really make this a lot wider and very much change the look of the piece. So once I've worked out the amount of length that I need to add to the bodice using the back, I then need to get all the pieces that I need to add length to. So I'm going to need to add length to the front and then also the little button guide and they've even remembered to put a length and a shorten line on the little button guide which some of the big four patterns do forget to do. So I really like that. Now as I've mentioned we're not actually adding length to the waistband pieces so we can put those to the side. They're staying as is and it is the button loop guide the upper bodice and the upper back bodice that we are lengthening and they're the ones with the lengthen and shorten lines. So I'm going to do it in exactly the same way that I always do and there is a link to a video up here which will go through that in more detail with you. So I have my sleeve, I have held this up to my arm, it will come just above my elbow when it's made up. Personally that's not a length that I particularly like. Also looking at the illustrations, this sort of sleeve is ending where the waist is ending which I do like the look of so I've added two inches of length to the bodice so I'm gonna add two inches of length to the sleeve in the same manner so they put the length and a shorten line on for me same thing with a scrap piece of paper two inch wide parallel lines cut this apart stick it down true up the sides cut it out and then we're ready to go yes so I'm starting sewing the orchid dress I have just cut out the interfacing that the pattern asks for so I have got that attached to to the pattern pieces. And as ever I'm starting with the fiddly bits which is why I'm doing the buttons first or the button loops first. I like to get all the fiddly bits done first just because then when you've got all the parts done it, 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 I know it doesn't come together any quicker. It just feels like it does in my head. It's a, it's a way of making the sewing process more enjoyable for myself. So I'm going to do the button loops, then I'm going to sew up the skirt, then I'm going to sew up the sleeves, then I'm going to do the bodice, then I can put all of the units together and uh, fingers crossed the end of the day I should have a new dress. The change that I'm making is I'm not using cord for the button loops, I'm going to make a narrow rouleau loop myself. I prefer how it looks. It again personal preference like you know if you if you like cord or you have cord in stock that's the other thing then you know use cord but I personally don't have cord in stock and I prefer how rouleau loops look. So I am going to use some string to make my rouleau loop. 
I've got like a inch and a half wide strip of fabric here. It's way wider than I need it to be, but I prefer to work with excess fabric that I can cut away rather than try and wrangle something that's the right dimensions, but really, really fiddly. And again, personal preference. So I'm gonna sandwich the string in between with the fabric, with the fabric right sides together. So over the end of the string, then so close to the string so that I can then pull it through, trim off the excess, then pull it through, I press it flat and use this for the uh, button loops. Let's get that done. Day two. Of the project and I have all the pieces constructed. So I have a bodice, I have two sleeves and I have the skirt and skirt lining next to me here. So I've got the bodice to this stage and now I am going to try it on. I've basted together the front as the pattern has asked me to. It's got the side seam is wide open, but I'm gonna try it on now so that I can get an idea of what the fit is looking like, because this is gonna be the easiest time to adjust. The skirt is completely adjustable because it's gathered at the top. So if I need to take it in a bit more, I just tighten up the gathers. If I need to let it out, fingers crossed I don't, I just just loosen the gathers and if I need to let it out I will just use a smaller seam allowance on the side seams. So I'm going to try it on. I won't show you what the try on clip because I'm just wearing a t-shirt and trousers today so I haven't got a slip on so I don't want to flash that much flesh on the internet but I will let you know uh, in a minute if it fits or not. Let's have a look. Well let, let me have a look. I'll be back in a second. A few moments later. Okay having tried it on I do think it's perhaps a smidgen bigger than I necessarily would like but I'm going to carry on with this one as is as I have enough of this fabric left that I can create a sash that I could cinch the waist in with if I didn't want to wear it with a belt. I can see myself wanting to wear this with a belt as well. I know I don't have to, <laughs> I know I say this every time, but I like belts. I do enjoy wearing belts with my clothes, it's just my preference. And once this one's finished, this is wearable muslin fodder, this fabric, I do like it, I like it a lot. I'm gonna have two dresses in it, so it's a good job I like it a lot, but it is one of those ones that I'm not super, super precious about. So once this one's fully made up, I will get a better idea of the fit because at the moment I'm just sort of pinning the side on, pinning the front closed because there's no buttons on it yet and sort of seeing what I think. Yeah, I think I'm just going to carry on with this one as is and then once it's completely finished then possibly nip it in a little bit at the waist. I think the bust is fine. I think it's the waist that's just a little bit too big. The finished garment measurement on this one is 29 and 7 eighths of an inch so it's probably that 7 eighths of an inch that I might just get rid of because we're nearing two inches of ease around my waist which we all know I'm not a huge fan of. Time to get the skirt put on then we can get the side zip put in. Then we, ooh, time to get the skirt and the lining put on. Then the side zip, then the sleeves, then hemming, and then we're done. Not too much, just long processes. So let's get started. Day three. Bit of construction. I wasn't meant to take this long, but never mind. There is a little bit of bias in this hem, so I wanted to give it its best opportunity to do its biasy thing and drop. The dress has a waist seam in it, so I am going to use my flexible tape measure, measure from the waist seam down to the hem, smooth as I go, make marks with my friction pen so that I can level out the hem of this dress. I have got a whole hem leveling video up here which I will link to obviously here and then also in the description below. This doesn't take into account if you have a really protruding bum, tummy, hips. It, this, this will give you an even level of hem the whole way around. It won't, as I say, take into account any protuberances of which I have, you know, big bum and big tummy. Well, biggish tummy. So there is that to bear in mind when using this hem leveling method but I have found that because it's all even it looks okay on me. So that's the method that I'm going to use. So let's get started to get this dress finished. I really really like this dress. I do prefer it with the cinching at the waist with the sash or the belt but I don't dislike it without that and that is the point of a wearable muslin to give you an idea of what the construction method of the dress is like and also to give you an idea of the fit that the pattern company recommend. So I have made enough deer and doe patterns this year to kind of get an idea of what they are intending and going by the finished measurements, the tweaks that I know I need to make so 
the adding of the length which I talked about at the beginning of this video I was confident enough that I could go in with a fabric like this which is wearable muslin fodder it was inexpensive I had a lot of it it's a print that I really like but it's not a print that I'm super precious about and if it had all gone horribly wrong I wouldn't have been devastated as it was so that is the point or that's my outlook on a wearable muslin I want to end up with a garment that hopefully will maybe with a few tweaks maybe be perfect straight out of the box kind of thing but I want to end up with a garment that is something that I like and that I will want to put on and wear out of the house at the end of the experiment but I don't expect it to be utterly perfect at the end of the sewing process as I've mentioned I am going to tweak the waistband of this pattern and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that now okay so the waist of this dress has ended up being just over two and a half inches too big for me so I want to take out two inches because I still want some wearing ease at the waist but I don't want as much as this pattern has got currently with these dimensions the first thing i'm going to do is take half an inch off of the center back because this is a straight line so i'm literally going to measure out half an inch draw a line kind of re-put in my cut on the fold line and take that piece off and i'm doing it from the center back because this is a say is a straight line and as you can see the side seam is slightly shaped so that's going to be taken off there and then for the front waistband the side seam is also shaped and the I could take the half inch off of here but the top edge of this one is shaped as well and it does get slightly wider here so what I'm going to do is there's a notch and I'm just going to draw a line by that notch I'm going to draw another line that is half an inch away I'm going to cut through that first line that I've drawn take my tape move that over that cut edge over and I'm lining up the top edge here and then I'll even out the bottom edge so I'm just going to stick that down and there's a tiny little jog at the bottom there so I am literally just going to even that out remark in my notch and then I will make a note saying half inch removed and half inch removed so in total I've taken out a whole inch out of these two pieces and because I need two of each or this one's cut in the fold and I need two of these that means I've taken out two inches in total which will give me the cinched waist that I like on my pattern. I'm not going to make any other alterations to the dress at all because the front and back bodice have gathering at the bottom which means that all I need to do to get those to fit into the new waistband size is just pull the gathers a little bit more. I think that's going to work really well because the top of this fits me really really nicely the shoulders fit nicely the neckline fits nicely the bust fits nicely I'm happy with all of that the only thing that I would like to tweak is the waistband so that's why I have done it the way I have I do like this skirt the pattern piece is the same for the front and back and it has a little bit of shaping at the waistline and a little bit of shaping at the hem I probably would like the skirt to be slightly fuller but that's just my preference this bodice i can see adding a multitude of different skirt options onto it the tiered and gathered skirt on this would look lovely a straight rectangular gathered skirt would be great and would use the entire width of fabric so i would get a little bit more volume that way a circle skirt of some description half three quarter full double would look lovely on this as well i really like this bodice i am not 100 percent like in love with the skirt as is but that's the beauty of pattern hacking you can pick the elements that you like from something that you've made and pick uh, other elements that you know you enjoy from other patterns and smoosh them together and end up with something that you really really like i'm really glad that i added the length to the sleeve i think it sits in a really really nice place the elastic on this i added so that it would fit around my kind of like bicep so i can wear this sleeve 
slightly shorter if I wanted to, but I don't think I ever will. I like the length that the sleeve hits just over my elbow, and I like that it's nice and loose around the bottom edge as well. Because I have got visible machine stitching for the elastic channel on the bottom, I used visible machine stitching for the hem of this dress, and I did the hem in the way that I usually do. I did a guideline of stitching 3 eighths of an inch away from the bottom edge, and then pressed that up, pressed it up again, and then top stitched it down from the inside with my blind hem or edge stitch foot with a slightly longer stitch length just to it just it just looks prettier in my opinion and I did the same for the outer and the inner hem. There's machine finishing on this dress on a couple of places. I don't mind that. I got away with it with this skirt. As I said there is but some minimal sh shaping in the hem of this skirt and usually turning up a curve again and again can create puckers and bubbles but because it's very minimal shaping I've gotten away with it. If I had put on a full circle skirt for example I would have used bias binding and there is a tutorial of how and why I do that up here. So with the visible stitching on the sleeve I just you know it, it made sense to me to have visible stitching on the hem. I love how this has turned out. I will make this again. I am going to make tweaks to the skirt because this is not my favourite skirt ever but I love the bodice. I think it's gorgeous. I really like the little button detail down the front. I have completely sewn the front shut by hand. It's not integral to the getting on and off of this dress to have the buttons open and close. Obviously if you're making the shirt version you do need the buttons to be able to open and close so if that is what you're doing and you're going to lose use rouleau loops like I did you might want to just double check and make the rouleau loops slightly bigger than I did. I made them the same length as the cord and whilst they fit over my teeny tiny buttons I wouldn't want to have to be buttoning this up and you know it, it they, they fit but they're not the easiest thing to get in and out of and now that they're into their rouleau loop they're never moving again so that is something to bear in mind if you do use rouleau loops over the cord that the pattern suggests because the cord the pattern suggests will be stretchy at least I think it will be stretchy I think Pattern number five from my Make Nine. I am over the moon with how this has come out. I will make this again. It is gorgeous. I'm just gonna tweak the skirts to have different styles because that's my preference. But the orchid dress, I like it. I like it a lot. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.